Hi YouTube, my name is Cassie and you're watching The Victorian Thimble. Welcome back for another leg in the series of making Luna Lappin and friends. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a round animal head while we make Clementine the cat. Let's go. Hi friends, just a quick message I'm dropping into our video here. I wanted to let you know that I did decide to do Clementine Cat in two videos because the video is like an hour long. It's taking a long time to edit and it's a lot of footage. And I thought if I broke it down into two pieces, it just might be a little more manageable to watch too. So stay tuned this week. You're gonna see the first parts of making Clementine Cat. Make sure you have all your supplies gathered. And then next week I'll release part two and you'll be able to finish the cat too. I look forward to seeing you with your needle and thread. Let's get started. And as always, everyone, the first legs of the project is the planning and gathering of supplies. So you get a basket, box, or bag to store your project in while you're working on it. Just keep everything together. And then, of course, some standard supplies we need, reading glasses, scissors, pins, upholstery noodles for attaching body parts, elasticized thread for attaching the legs, a pattern envelope to put the traced pieces, assorted buttons prepared for the eyes, arms, and leg attachments. We have our Clementine Cat um, wool felt fabric here and the white felt for her face as well. And then of course we have the Sewing Luna Lappin Friends book, tracing paper, and a pencil. Now you're ready to get started. Here it is, once you have your pattern pieces all traced out onto the paper and all the markings are in place, next thing we're going to do is cut them out. And now I just want to show you what I'm doing with the layout here. Just to try and conserve fabric, I didn't go selvage edge to selvage edge, but I've placed a fold. And then with the way I have this laid out, once I've cut out these, I'm gonna flip this over this way to cut out the other two legs. Same idea up here. I've got the head on the same grain of fabric as it was displayed in the book. And once I got that arm cut out, I'm gonna flip it over that way to cut out the other two arms. Let's go. So for making the ears and the foot pads, I did choose to fussy cut the ears and the foot pads so that one of the feet's going to have this nice little I love you message. I put these pink hearts upside down to give a pink shade in the ear, but ultimately this fabric was chosen because it's quite complementary to the cat's fur. And here is the four pieces fussy cut, the two feet and the two inner ears. Now you can see all the parts cut out together. This is the back of the head unfolded, the head side pieces, the center front, and the face piece. This is going to have whisker markings on it, inner and outer ears, arms and legs and body parts, fussy cut feet, and then there's the tail pieces. We're now really ready to start assembling Clementine Cat. Mm -hmm. 
Next, it's time to assemble the body. You're going to use your pattern pieces and add the markings on the body as you can see that I've done here. These are the markings we're going to attach the legs with. Next, you're gonna get the stomach piece and the two back pieces and stitch everything together. You can see here that first I attached the back two pieces, I left a section open for stuffing. I did reinforce these body parts with some interfacing because again, I'm just not sure how strong that felt is so, I wanted to make sure when I was stitching those legs it wasn't going to be ripping and pulling on everything. So that's what I did. And then here you can just see some extra sped up footage just showing me stitching those body pieces and over stitching or edge stitching them as well. And now just like you did with the head, the body's ready to be stuffed. Stuff that body until it's nice and full, but not too tight. Once you have the body stuffed, you're gonna pinch the edge hard and pin this into place to hold your seam allowance as best as you can. And there's my dog in the background. <laughs> Hi, Sky. Once you have this pinned and you're satisfied with it, you're going to run a seam and overstretch that as well. Sorry guys, I didn't take any footage of that part. Next, you can see the footage for the leg Measuring down two and three quarter centimeter, you're going to run the stitch along the back part of the leg first and over the top part of the foot. Once you have that stitch, you're going to do what you see here. You're going to turn the foot inside out so that the stitching is to the inside. And now find your center point of your foot pad and pin that into place as well. Now that they're pinned, they're ready to be sewn. This is super sped up footage, just showing me sewing the feet onto the legs. Here now you can see the stitch seaming has been run and just turn it right side out again. We're still going here, guys. Now that they're turned right side out, the directions say to stuff the feet up to the point where you've sewn. So grabbing some of that stuffing, just stuff the feet only area and the ankle area until you have the stuffing about the consistency that you want. There's one foot done. Now that the feet are stuffed, you're going to use the top pattern piece using that pin method once again push through the pattern and the fabric, then get a marking tool, in this case I'm using the O, to make a hole in the fabric so that I can attach the button. The directions do call for us to make a hole in the fabric and you're gonna push a button with like a shank piece through that's going to be used to attach the legs to the body. Upon doing this, I did start to think the same thing about, gee, I'm gonna to wanna to reinforce these to make sure they're strong enough so once I had the buttons in place and I secured it with the safety pin, then I went and I reinforced these pieces as well. Actually, I did it after it was sewn, but I'll explain. You can see here that I am sewing um, down the seams and then I'm running the overstitching or zigzagging as well. Once they're actually assembled, then you're gonna pin those seams closed. Look at the pressure I'm using with my fingers here. You can see that I do quite try hard to keep the stuffing where it needs to be and run that seam as well. It is a little bit challenging to sew this part, but it's so worth it for the strength and stability it has knowing that you closed it with machine stitching. Now here you can see that reinforcement that I was talking about. Hey YouTube, okay, so we're moving along here on Freddy the Badger. And so 
Okay, we have the body, right? And we have some legs. Now, I just want to show you on the legs here what happened is, so we have the legs here and they're assembled according to directions and as per the directions, I installed buttons with shanks. See that? Right? Buttons with shanks. Um, and I installed them on the inside of the leg as described and we've got the shank hanging out with the safety pin holding it in place. Problem is, this is dollar store felt. <laughs> and I don't know if I actually went to my local fabric land, which I think is the equivalent to a Sally fabric store in the States or wherever your, you know, whatever your big box fabric store is, I don't know if the felt I could find there would be better or not. It's really tough to say. But what I can tell you is I could see the felt on this was already stretching and opening and it was going to push right through. I mean, the button on the other side isn't that big, right? So what I did, I don't have any black fusible facing. So I literally, I did this. I'm thinking before I totally sew it all together, I'm going to just give it a little color with a marker to darken it. It's the best I can do, right? In addition to that, what I've done here is um, using the marking on the pattern. So you see the little marking there? So I did sort of measure, it's approximately three quarters of an inch away from this uh, side seam here on each side. So you see that's the back, right? And uh, ooh, one of those is ever so slightly higher than the other, isn't it? Let's fix that. There. So I'm going to remeasure it, but you see I've got the leg socket markings on each side. And so now what we're going to do is this is all going to get sewn together like so. We're going to attach a leg. We're going to attach a leg. And let me just show you the picture for this diagram. So you see on the diagram they're showing that you're going to stitch through the layers and back and forth until you have it through at least twice. So what I had also for elasticized thread, what I had handy, I had bought this, it is stretchy, um, for making masks for, you know, <laughs> the world events, right? Um, we avoid certain words because I don't want algorithms to pick up certain things. So yeah, anyways, just to be safe. But anyways, I have this elastic and this is what I'm gonna use. And then I have this package of heavy duty noodles, noodles. <laughs> I also have this package of heavy duty noodle. <laughs> I also have. <laughs> it said noodles <laughs> too many times. <laughs> now I have the giggles. A few moments later. I also have this package of heavy duty household needles. And the one that I like the looks of the best in here, in terms of the length that it can offer plus that it has a little bit of sharpness to it, is this one here that says book binding. Um, it says book binding and sail making needle. This little guy right here. So uh, despite whatever needle I showed you before, this is what we're using. It's a sock darning needle. I will again show you the length of the needle here. It's about three inches, almost, almost three inches. It's the only one with the eye of a needle big enough that I could actually get this elasticized thread through. And so now we are going to sew the legs onto Freddy. I measured out a length of the elastic thread and I got a very thick darning needle as you could see and I stitched it through.
Okay, so now we have the body made and the legs attached, right? And so far, so good. Here she is everyone, legs are attached to the body, the little arms are sewn and ready to be attached, but as I told you, I like to put the head on first. Finally, we're over here to the head assembly. You can see we're gonna put the back and front parts of the ears together. They're gonna get attached to the center head piece. Then we're gonna attach these side head pieces and then the front face piece. This is the last part attached. The directions show you to put it all together first and then attach the whiskers, but just like I showed you last time, we're doing the whiskers before we attach the back of the head, but now it's time to sew Miss Clementine's head. Let's get started. And so the first thing you're gonna do is with right sides together, you're gonna sew the ears together like this all around the edges and just like that, right sides together. Obviously guys, this isn't neat and tidy yet, but you get the idea on both of these. First thing you're gonna do you're gonna stitch these like this and then turn it right side out. For the next step, you can see that what I did was with that heat erasable pen, I marked out the three match points and then on the widest part of the match points, I've pinned the ears so that, look at on the back side here guys, do you see it's not that much left, right? So that's why after you do your whole seam allowance bit, basically I positioned my ears here on that side of the triangle, okay? So now we're gonna sew this down on each side and then the directions show, so you can see here, watch this. Do you see how my layout is matching the position, right? Okay, and then after that, we're gonna be attaching the side pieces here. So I'll be back after we have attached these pieces and pinned the next in place. Now everyone, just to show you, the picture is showing the match points drawn out on the fabric, and you can see the right and wrong sides of the ear together just like this so that once we attach the side piece, those ears are gonna turn where you want them to go. So we're gonna stitch this down and then attach the side pieces of the round head. By now, your sewn piece should look something like this. Now, we're gonna attach the front pieces. Okay, I wanna show everyone what I'm doing differently. So the directions show you to take this round back piece, right? And stitch it around here. However, this makes closing the face piece and attaching whiskers exceedingly difficult that just like Wilhelmina Mouse, I'm disregarding the directions. So here's what I'm doing. You can see that much like the directions show you here to stitch this closed and then you're gonna flatten and stitch across the nose piece until you attach the white. Here's what I am doing is we have attached the side seams successfully. Now I'm gonna do this part here, okay? And we're gonna stitch along the chin length there. After I have that sewn, we're gonna open and flatten that nose portion there. Okay, let's go do it. Okay, I just wanted to show you everyone that I have the, I've sewn this chin seam if you will, okay? And now, what we have to do next, sorry guys, just trying to manage this fabric, I'll probably edit that out, but if I don't, then you get the idea. <laughs> so, 
look at here how the directions show you're gonna stitch the nose area flat so that when you turn it out you can do the white piece correctly so here's my piece much like this do you see it we're gonna take this piece and we're gonna flip it out I'm gonna stitch it flat like that okay that's next let's go and so now we have the head piece basically sewn I ended up with a slight little fold in the fabric there but honestly by the time we attach everything it's going to be fine so you can see here's the head front right we have our side seam sewn the next seam and then I stitched flat across the bottom there when you turn it out this is what you get now as per the directions the next piece that you want to do is take your pre-cut piece of felt do you see this right you want to line this up so that the opening of that little uh, mouthpiece is coming up where your nose and chin are meeting this is gonna get stitched along here like this and then this piece is going to get closed up along here like this so that when we're finished sewing it we're gonna have something that looks like that picture right up there okay so how we're gonna do this is we're gonna start by pinning this piece down here and then I'm going to hand tack with some hand stitching around here and then I may reinforce it with machine stitching but for now honestly for how delicate this is hand stitching is the best now you can see the mouse head front is sewn we have the center panel and the two side panels attached up to the halfway mark in the ear as the directions described you can also see the back of the head here that's going to be attached at the back, but we're not doing that yet. The next part that the directions show to do is to attach the uh, nose. So I've marked through with pins all of the little uh, whisker marks and the areas for those darts there. And so now what we're going to do is we simply push those pins all the way through, just like you can see. You take your heat erasable fabric pen. I don't even have to touch the iron to the fabric to get rid of this color. If I just sort of steam it near the fabric, these things will disappear. The color goes away. It's really great. So in here now, when you have your pins laid flat, all that you're going to do is mark out those points that you need. Small and neat, just like this. And then there is a couple more down here. Now that you have the points marked out, we can remove the pins like so. And then just remind yourself that these two lines are to go directly over to the center like this. Whoops, like that and like that. Okay, so there is your points marked up for the whiskers to be sewn and then that folding pleat point. Now what we're going to do is attach this face piece. It ends up actually attaching to the cat this way and then folding and stitching down into place so that we have a round nose. So this is where I actually stray from the directions a little. The directions call for you to attach the backing of the head and then you're going to be attaching the face parts and the eye parts and sewing the whiskers. I know myself, and I know that trying to sew something when it's already in a round shape is going to make me lose my temper so fast and my work isn't gonna turn out even or nice either.
So what I've done is I just took an ordinary hair elastic. I put a wad of stuffing into the face so that it'll stand up and we get a little bit of shape. Now, when we're attaching this piece that we pre-marked out with our heat erasable pen, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna line up this center point here with the seam that's going down the neck and the chin of the cat. And then, once you have it lined up there like that, you're actually gonna wanna put it just slightly past that seam line. Okay, like, can you see? I'm like sort of just past it like that. All right, so once you have that in place, what we're gonna do is we are going to hand stitch this down. This piece is going to get closed and also hand stitched down around the cat like this. And then you can see we will have this nicely centered and you can see the positioning where the eyes will go next. I'm gonna show you a little bit of footage of me stitching this into place. I just want to show everyone where this is at right now so you can see that I have hand stitched down the cat's face this is using silk buttonhole thread now you can see here as we look at this I started here and I went around this way and you can see that first I did doubled up thread and then decided that that was going too lumpy so I changed to single thread which first I basted this, hand basted all around and then stitched it. So here you can see I did struggle with my hand sewing, but then look what happens over here. I got the hang of it. See that? Now that's pretty neat and even. Um, so I did go up this part again as well without picking out the basting stuff underneath. So anyways, guys, I'm not thrilled with my work around here. For now, I'm gonna leave it and move ahead with the project, but there's a chance that from about maybe here back, I might pick it out and do it again at some point in time. I'm undecided. For the moment, we're gonna move on. So the next things that we're going to do here is I have these two little eye spaces cut out that go where we have the drawn positions for them. And then I also have a little felt black nose cut out that we are gonna position like that and stitch that down as well. I might actually make that nose just a touch smaller. So there we go, guys. Um, these are next steps is I'm going to hand stitch down the white parts in the nose, but actually attaching the black buttons on the eyes, we do that after the project is assembled. So right now, eyes, nose, and whiskers. I'll be back. So that concludes part one of Making Clementine the Cat. We've made her body, her arms, and her legs, and the front part of her face. Thanks so much, guys, for taking the time to tune in and watch. So now, next week will be part two. I look forward to seeing you then with your needle and thread at the Victorian Thimble. Take care, guys. Bye.